Armando Hasurangan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurangan. In this video, we're going to look at the fates of a cell. So here we have a mitotic cell, such as the cells in our skin, in our gut, and in our intestine, the epithelial cells. These mitotic cells will double its organelles, it will double its DNA, and then it will divide into two identical cells. So this is known as a cell cycle. You have the G1 phase, the S phase, the G2 phase, and the M phase. So this is the cell cycle where the cell divides. But the mitotic cell can also enter a G0 phase where it will essentially, uh, which is essentially cell arrest. And so this is known as the G0 phase, the dormant phase. But with appropriate signals, um, the cell can re-enter the cell cycle if needed to regenerate or renew the cells around it. Of course, after this mitotic cell has divided many, many times, it will reach a limit to when it cannot divide anymore. And so this cell will become a senescent cell. So cell senescence. And a senescent cell means that the cell cannot replicate anymore because it has reached its limit, known as the Hayflick limit. One reason for, for this is that its DNA becomes shorter with each replication. So if this was the cell's DNA, so if this was the end of the cell's DNA, the end of the DNA actually becomes shorter with each replication. The ends of the DNA are known as telomeres. So if the ends of the DNA did not, does not become shorter, it would mean that we would be immortal. And interestingly enough, Cancer cells are immortal because their, their DNA do not get shorter like that, like normal cells. Now, not all cells are mitotic cells. Remember, mitotic cells are like your skin cells, your gut and intestine cells. But then you have post-mitotic cells, which are cells such as your neurons and your muscle cells. These cells cannot enter the cell cycle. Once it's become that type of cell, it cannot divide. It, is, it just becomes dormant, you can say. It will stay in the G0 phase constantly. Anyways, that's important to know that you have mitotic cells and post-mitotic cells. But also, you have also germ cells, which are your sperm and your eggs. Anyway, so these cells, any cells, can actually undergo a few fates um, during its course. It can undergo apoptosis, necrosis, and autophagy. autophagy. Now, let's look at each one of these three and uh, look at what they're all about. So, apoptosis is essentially... Uh, a programmed cell death. It's a normal physiological response which removes unwanted cells. It's programmed cell death. And it's due to some stress that occurs to a cell. It can be an infection or whatever. But the cell realizes this and it will undergo programmed cell death, apoptosis. In apoptosis, the cell receives a death signal, either from the outside or from within the cell. This de death signal causes the breakdown of the cell's DNA and the cytoskeleton and proteins, which causes the cell to shrink. As the cell shrinks, blebs will form. These are like droplets of water separating. And at the same time, the nucleus breaks. But the cell's in integrity is still maintained. It doesn't go everywhere. As blebs are formed, um, it will form into apoptotic bodies. These apoptotic bodies uh, will have the cell's organelles and parts within it, confined. Then macrophages will come along and clean up the apoptotic bodies. 
so the apoptotic bodies are phagocytized. This leads to a silent, non-inflammatory cell death, and everything is cleaned up. Necrosis, on the other hand, is completely different. The cell may be chemically or physically damaged by some form of trauma or infection. A normal cell, if it was in normal conditions, it will undergo apoptosis. But if a cell just died, it will undergo necrosis. And so it will die by non-programmed means. Necrosis is non-programmed cell death. And what happens here is that the cell will swell. Not only this, but the organelles will sell, swell too, and it will accumulate, just keep accumulating water. And this process continues. The cells will also show signs of blebbing, as though it will separate. But in reality, it will just grow and then rupture and break the out and it will break the outer cell membrane, releasing all its cellular content to adjacent cells, causing further damage. This will create a response that will attract neutrophils, which are highly inflammatory cells, to clean up the mess and cause further inflammation. Therefore, we can say that necrosis, unlike apoptosis, causes the whole cell to rupture, and therefore it is highly inflammatory. Cells can also undergo autophagy. This is where within the cell you have damaged organelles, specifically. So the cell itself is not damaged, just the organelles within it is damaged, either through starvation or infection. If this happens, the cell does not want to keep this organelle, and so it will undergo autophagy. What happens here is that the cell normally have lysosomes, which are vesicles containing an acidic environment. The cell will program the lysosomes to engulf the damaged organelle, or if it was an infectious agent, to engulf the infectious agent, and whatever it is. And then it will essentially, the lysosome will essentially digest it. And so through this mechanism, the cell will survive and will not need to undergo apoptosis. It's balanced, uh, its, its energy balance is maintained, and it, it's, it can remove the infection, or it can eliminate the damaged organelle, whatever the case may be. So that was a brief overview of the fates of the cell. They can die either through apoptosis or necrosis, and they can undergo autophagy.